this tape allow me to quit my job, shed my shame, make a million bucks and become the best damn pool hustler this side of the Colorado? That's right, folks. Guess who's back to teach us the fine art of faking drunk so you can rip people off. Today, we're going to talk about The Secrets of Pool Hustling, starring Pretty Boy Floyd. There's a lot that goes in to hustling pool the right way. <laughs> Excuse me, we're playing for $200 a game. It's my shot. If you want to play, you put your quarter over there. Cash. That's where it's at. Those of you who frequent the Goat Cave know of my history with the famed pool hustler who goes by Pretty Boy Floyd. In fact, the infamous How to Hustle and Not Get Hustled Tape Goat review remains to be this channel's most viewed video. Very specifically, amongst men 55 and up. I'm so not proud. Many of you old farts were cranky because I couldn't pronounce a certain someone's name correctly. I am a humble goat. And a humble goat always knows when to admit that he's wrong. So I'm here to pronounce it right, people. Today we're going to learn some valuable pool tips from our beautiful boy, Jambling Matangus. No, wait, I'm sorry. Jimberton Nekringus. Wait. Jeremy Papaya. Alan Stevens. Brett Favre. Now that we've buried the pool cue, let's talk about the tape, shall we? And here we have the tape, everybody. Look at this photogenic, handsome devil, Jimbley Hembley. It's got a little bit of a, of a professional headshot vibe going for it. You can see here that two guests are credited for this video, Iwa Mateya and Steve Miserak. I think this guy is in the video at the end. She's not in it at all. I have no idea why he says that it features his, his wife at the time in there because she doesn't actually appear in the tape at any point. Ain't no barcode on this greasy heat. You can see on the back we have just a brief description of what we have in store for us and then three separate bios. It is said that uh, uh, Ewa makes an appearance in this because she's not in it. Uh, maybe they, they made the cover before they actually made the video. Who knows? Pop that sucker off. Ooh, yeah. As you can see, it's a pretty bare bones label. There's not a whole lot of info on there, just the title and, you know, your run in the mill FBI warning telling me not to copy this. There you have it, everybody. The tape. Jimmy's back, baby! And this time he's rented a really nice tuxedo. Immediately it strikes me, watching this is going to be a very different experience than the other tape. In How to Hustle, Jimmy took on this sort of laid back persona. He was like this incorrigible rascal who was just out to have some fun, shoot some pool, make some cash along the way. In this one, his tone is a little bit more severe. He's kind of representing this boomer Chad energy. I've never been beaten playing for money. When it comes to playing for cash, I'm the boss man. Always have been, always will be. He's a serious dude who's earned his place in the hierarchy of pool hustlers, and he's here to teach you how to be like him. Because you're a loser. We also learn how he started going by the name Pretty Boy Floyd. First thing you might want to ask, hey, how'd you get the name Pretty Boy Floyd? Years ago, I used to travel around with Minnesota Fats. And people are always relating pool for some re reason or another with gangsters. So everywhere Fats and I went, he used to introduce me as his protege, Pretty Boy Floyd. Minnesota Fats? Sounds like your Midwestern stepdad's bowling league. Badooms. He hates trophies because you can't buy nothing with them. There's trophy players and there's cash players. I prefer the latter. You want to go to the bank, buy a house? You want to go there, get yourself a new car? What are you going to put up for collateral? A trophy? The guy at the bank doesn't care how many trophies you got. Right away, it occurs to me that perhaps Jimmy has a problem repeating himself when there's no script. I like playing for cash. You can do things with cash. Hey, let's face it. What can you do with a trophy? I like money, don't you? Let's face it. You can do a lot of things in this world with money. What are you going to do with trophies? Are you going to go buy a new house or a new Rolls Royce 
when you ain't got a dime in your pocket? Oh, you're going to put a trophy up for collateral. Yeah. Well, the guy at the bank doesn't think so, and I don't either. Cash. That's where it's at with me. You can have the trophies. I have to give credit where it's due. Uh, at least in this tape, he acknowledges how dangerous pool hustling can actually be. Because you're going to run into a lot of people that, hey, let's face it, they're not too happy when they lose their cash. Are you happy when you lose yours? I'm not. At least I don't think I am. I don't know. I've never lost my cash. This moment I find truly precious. Just wanted to be extra, extra sure that nobody could ever think he was capable of losing money. Never in his life doesn't even know what it feels like. Cash. Remember, don't blow your cool. Just like it was in the motion picture, The Hustler. What'd they do? They busted his thumbs. Why? Because he blowed his cool. He talks an awful lot about purchasing a home with his pool winnings. You want to go to the bank? Buy a house? How are you going to go buy a new house or a new Rolls Royce when you ain't got a dime in your pocket? You think you're going to have a big house by going on an ego trip? You're going to end up living in a YMCA. I'm seriously curious to know whether or not you can actually net that much just ripping off drunks every night. I don't know, if you or anyone you know has ever managed to make a living off of hustling pool, uh, leave a comment. I want to know your story. Now, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about hustling. How do you hustle somebody? On to another rambling segment, this time preceded by a deft video transition. Now, playing for trophies is your bag. Hey, more power to you. Can't buy nothing with him. Jambus is going to walk us through how to spot a pool hustler. When you were playing for nothing, they walked around like this and like this, like they were about ready to go to the morgue. But now, all of a sudden, you start playing five, ten, twenty dollars a game, and they're running around the table like a machine gun and a robot. Okay, so if they suck at first when you're playing for free, and then suddenly start kicking your ass when you start playing for money, boom, you've got a pool hustler. Simple. Moving on. Before, he was, when we were playing for nothing, he never once made the nine ball. He never even came close. The minute we start playing for five bucks a game, I can't even remember him missing the money ball. Okay, I think we get it, Jimmy. How many times has this happened to you? Playing for free with a stranger, you beat him every game, so now you started to get greedy. Well, I'll take a chance, and I'll ask him to play for five bucks a game. Everything seems to change. Why does it change? Dollar signs. That's why it changes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cue cards. That's all I'm saying. Tighten your shit up. Like me. About halfway through, you'll notice that Jimmy might be regretting his wardrobe choice a little bit because he's uh, looking a little schwitzy. Next piece of vital advice, get yourself a sandwich. Who's that stranger walked in? I don't know, he's just sitting at the counter. Probably just come in for a sandwich. And that's what I do, I order a sandwich. I have to give credit to this next part. It is probably the first moment in this whole tape where he gives concise advice that teaches me something that I might not have thought of. Now you ask yourself, well, now that I've lost to Ed, the worst player in the place, now what do I do? Well, it's very simple. You shake the man's hand, tell him you enjoyed the game, and maybe you'll come back tomorrow because you really don't have much money on you today. So what happens? Calmly stroll out of the pool room and come back tomorrow. Play the long game. Get people to think you're nobody. Get people to let their guard down. Great advice. Great content. His next piece of advice is to create circumstances where you're not going to have to play your best. Even though you might be a better player than the best player in the place, why play him even? Let's see if we can get him to spot us something, give us a handicap. Now we don't have to show our speed. We can win the money without playing our best. Which is great and all, but it sort of runs contrary to the last video where he's shooting trick shots left and right. And the lecture segment ends. Now we get into the demonstrative portion of the videos. And when I get done with you, 
you're going to know how to hustle too. Our handsome boy is playing a game of poker, just so we all know he can kick our ass at that game too. I call. I finally got you where I want you, pretty boy. Freedom and weep. Full house. <laughs> What's the matter? But my house is a little bigger than your house. <laughs> He's got this sort of cretinous, drunken lackey who keeps trying to get his attention, but he get, keeps getting chewed. Hey, fly. Hey, fly. Fly. Hey. I'll take two. You can tell we're dealing with some hardcore boomer shit because he uses the term barmaid. I'll tell you what, give this to the barmaid for me, will you? Some 19th century shit. Hey, man, I got a spot for you, okay? You know, there's this town down the road about 50 miles. There's a new bar down there called Joe's, and they're playing pool for a lot of money. Now, the guy that owns the joint, okay, he ain't, he ain't around except at night. The action starts about noon. Jimmy does a great job developing the emotional core of their relationship in this moment. How about that, man, you know? I need a little help, you know? Three, you, know you know I need a little help, man, you know? All right, all right. You know, yeah. you know? Why don't you stay you, off man. the line? Thank you, uh, why don't you take care of yourself a little bit? I'm trying, boss. I'm trying. He cares about his well-being. It's actually very sweet. So he follows a tip from his crusty lackey and starts on a scheming. Hello, Fred. It's Floyd. Say, listen, I got a spot tomorrow where I want to run a little con job. I, I think there's big money involved in this. Meet me there about uh, between 10 and 10.30 tomorrow morning. Oh, and by the way, bring some paint and clothes. He'll pretend that he's a painter who was contracted to paint the bar. Something to drink? Uh, no, thank you. Sure. Pete the painter, you frame it, we paint it. Where would you like us to start? I don't know anything about it. And he's pulling out all his stops. He's getting the heat off him, he's flashing the money, all of it. Joe come into our shop the other day, said he wanted us to paint the place. I got the order right here. I don't know anything about it. I got the money right here. See that? $2,300. You know, ordinarily, it would cost about $4,000 to paint this place. Ah, you were doing so well, Jimmy, but then you had to get the cameraman in the frame. Pan away all you want. There is no undoing that. After schmoozing the bartender by weirdly flirting with her and asking for her autograph. My son and I, we, we went to a movie the other night, and I swear to God, you're the spitting image of the leading lady in that film. Do you think it would be too personal if maybe I got your autograph? My son My would just flip over. He asks if he can post his stuff up underneath the pool table and wait for the boss to get there. He encounters a very dirty looking man playing pool and proceeds to be very annoying. Where's the eight ball? We're not playing eight ball. We're playing nine ball. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you playing for? I'm playing for $200 a game. Oh, I'm sorry. $200 a game. $200. You see that bucket of paint? And I mean truly annoying. He's annoying the guy, and he's annoying me. $30. Can you beat that $30? You know what paint used to cost me? I used to get that bucket for $17.50. 30 bucks a bucket now. $200. I could buy six buckets of paint for what you're playing for. We're trying to shoot a game here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Excuse me. I want him to stop. Jimmy, stop. I used to get these by the dozen for about $7.50. $20 now. Can you beat that? $30 a bucket, $20 a brush. It's a $50 a rattle. And then they get to play in and out come the hustle. Fred, we got a little time to kill uh, waiting for Joe to come in. You want to play a few games of pool? Huh? You want to do that? You want to play a few games of pool? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, let's try it, all right? Yeah. You don't mind if I put my brush on in there with my paint? Yeah. And he starts laying up shots. Bop, bop, and $5,000, that's enough. And that's the tape, everybody. He gets the money, 
and he gets out. Well, Pete, you're a much better player than most. Well, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it. Fred, we got to get going. We got other jobs to do. It was a long journey getting here, people. Two tapes, but now we finally know how to hustle pool. In my heart, there was a lock, and Jerry Matambla had the key. I like this one. Uh, it, it lacks the levity and charm of how to hustle, uh, but it compensates for that by being infinitely more informative. I'd say how to hustle, I'd award three and a half goats, and this tape gets a solid four. But I'm confident that after watching this tape, I can finally throw out that peanut butter and jelly and dish out some of that lobster and caviar. I don't want to go through life eating peanut butter and jelly. I'll go through life eating lobster and caviar and taking you with me. I am tape goat and remember, air hockey is better than pool. And you all know it. Also, subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined. If you subscribe, you'll get early access to ad-free content, such as this show and Tape Goat at the Movies, our podcast, and, uh, you know, other shout-outs that are going to have, like, nice juicy sneak peeks and, and, and other great stuff. If you're interested, please click the link in the description.